statement to make on a Sunday morning. Uh, before we continue with anything else, uh, please uh, pray for uh, Sister Kay uh, uh the last card. Uh, the, the good news part of it is that she already has uh, for not discharge orders. Amen. Uh, actually, she never thought that that kind of order would come, but uh, we praise the Lord for that. However, uh, continue to pray for her. I see Paul a little bit. She, uh, uh, for some reason, uh, experienced incredible amount of pain uh, uh, to the point that the current should have been discharged in blood kind of way. So they don't know what's going on. She is watching live in Pastor Bob, of course. Um, so do pray for them, okay? Uh, pray for them not only with their uh, finances, but also pray for them uh, with regards to uh, uh, the pain that she's going through right now. Uh, we will not have actually the full reasons as to what and why yet. Uh, so let's pray for the doctors. Um, that they would gain wisdom to know what they're supposed to do for the medicines being taken for them to work uh, that they were you know in the way that they were designed to work okay so uh, please uh, pray for that this morning as we you know uh, we appreciate uh, of course uh, them being uh, able to listen to church this morning to those watching live and listening to us live on stream and on Facebook we welcome you to the morning service, and uh, uh, today we're going to talk to you about similar to what the car says. Stop kissing the grace, though. No? My, my only fear about grace is what I appreciate grace and love the grace of God. And be I am just, no? Is that when we talk of grace, often most Christians, when we talk of grace, we speak of the things that God, you know, gives to us. So grace, yeah, right? Grace is. Favor shown to you by God. Favor merited to you. Uh, in Tagalog, it be not how say it. Given to you by God. Right? Given to you by God that you can't work for, you, you don't deserve. That's, that's grace, right? Uh, the best thing about grace picture is salvation. You know, uh, we don't deserve and cannot work for God's favor on us. Well, our God is good enough, nice enough, talented enough, giving enough, um, you know, just enough. Para yung tao na yung magin to deserve to be a child of God, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine. The only issue I have in today's church when it comes to grace is that we love to to swim in grace. We love to be in grace. We wake up every morning to mercy and grace, but we are not gracious people. To make it simple, kung sino pa yung pinapaburan at marami, siya pa yung maramot. That's what you're talking about, like offerings? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being a people of grace. Yung, yung mga tao na ginagamit yung panilang buhay, na ginagamit yung panilang papapala, na ginagamit yung kung ano mong meron sila, using it the way God intended it to be used, and that is to shine the light of Christ onto other people. That's what they do with your money. You keep it. Tama? Kung sino yung pinakamadami, pinakitaan ng kabutihan ng Diyos, kadalasan yun ang pinakamarama, I said, you're talking to me? Well, I don't know. And the reason for that is simple. The reason for that is often because after a person comes to know Christ as Savior, after a person becomes saved or born again, we begin to live our lives the way we desire to live. So basically, we just became Christians. We just accepted Christ as Savior and it basically ended where it began. Because from then on, we want to dictate what am I going to serve God with? 
How will I live my life? Then he can be in God. So in the end, you became a follower of Christ only in salvation, but not truly a follower of Christ. I see, from that time, we oh, got to know Christ. We do the own thing. Big God, you know, go to heaven. If I die, the rest of my stuff stay out of it. Right? That's just like a husband or a wife, you know, telling the wife or the husband, I love you. I, I take you as my wife to love and to cherish, to comfort and to keep. Right? Taking you for richer. I love you. For richer or for poorer, till death do us part. But you can't have the passwords on my email, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Sunday, raise my hand in worship, 
But on regular days, I'm going to stretch up whatever I want to do. Act the way I want. I will dictate to God. God, I'm going to give you my talent. And God say, Sabi ka rin. Sabi ka lang ako sa mga ito. Dad, papautangin kita. Pauta ko sa akin, sa akin kaya ng pwede. Pinayin ako ko sa iyo. Nice to come here. Abraham, the children tell you that. Dad, papautangin kita. Matuwa kita dyan. Incredible. 
He was tenacious. Kinatatakutan si Apostle Paul. If you were a dis, you know, if you were uh, not loyal to the Roman Empire, if you were a criminal, if you were, you know, si Apostle Paul mo, that's a death. That death script to you. Okay. He was a known and relentless fighter, highly principled. Okay? He was he knew his religion. He knew, he knew the Bible. He has memorized the Matthew, I'm sorry, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the book of Isaiah. He knew that by at least 13 years old. Amen. So he's very good. He's very principled. He also oppressed Christians because he thought they were dangerous called alien with destabilizing the empire. So those of you who know world history and ancient history, often the Christians were being pointed to as the number one, you know, uh, culprits that had the downfall in the Roman Empire. Truth be told, uh, the, the Roman Empire or the Greco Roman Empire were very hedonistic. They don't like you, it's time to replace you, they'll stab you. Right there, sir, we can imagine the president giving his you know, uh, yearly address. Suddenly, the vice president comes up, stabs him, <laughs> kills him right there. In the of Katawan, the vice president takes, you know, puts on the, the new crown and says, I am declaring myself as a new president. People say, okay, and then they move on. That's how crazy those people were. If you read the Roman history at that time, they were so hedonistic. Hedonistic means for every man did what was right in his own eyes. It's the end of Romans, the book of Romans, chapter, uh, <coughs> the last chapter, you know, statement, no, at Ginagyo and Tao, everything what? If you study the, the social, economic, and sexual uh, practices, the Roman Empire was crazy. It was crazy. And when things went back at them, they blamed the Christians. For example, for example, every year, there's the great sacrifice of the Roman gods. So what they will do, they will kill as many as 10,000 animals. It's a sacrifice not done to the pagan gods. And then what they will do is they'll take the pagan gods, they'll, they'll take it, and, and, and what they will do is they will sacrifice you know, to the pagan gods. It's a sacrifice. Can you imagine the amount of meat that is? That was the Roman Empire. That's the Roman Empire. Now, Paul, say mo man yung walo kahalo ni natin. Ibenta natin ngayon sa palengke. So can you imagine sa mga businessmen na nandito? If you flood the market, what will happen? Tama? Prices go down. Why? Ano that mean? Tama? The Christians, however, believe that you should not eat anything that is offered to idols. So, you mark this channel, I am a woman. So, the reality, you have high demand, high volume, tapos, nobody wants to buy. What happened now? Abubulok yung karne, patatapon, economy, magsak, sasabi ng governor. Sige, because it's not a as a That's exactly what happened in Corinth, in Peter, and, and, and most of the epistles, that's what happened. So they blame the Christians. As not the Christians. And I big Who flooded the markets? Was it not a crazy church? Oh, what did the Christians? That's exactly. What happened during those times? That's just a sample. See, Apostle Paul believed that as for in my Christianity and Islam, and so, but I am my Christians. And so, even in the execution of Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, you will find Apostle Paul dragging Christians, even kids, sa gitna ng kale, as they was the first church elders, Stephen, stoned to death. I explained stoning last, last, last week. But si Yaku will open a stone in the was just, mm -hmm. I uh, Wasn't like that. But si Yaku is in the It wasn't just, but, uh, it wasn't like that. Stoning back then means 
that you will be brought to the dump site of society sa katumbakan ng basura, and they will take rocks. And lahat ng mga tao will start throwing rocks at you. And you will literally bleed unconsciously to death na habang natabunan ka na ng mga bato, yun na ilibingan mo. It's the story. And the apostle Paul was Saul at that time. He had a bit of a drag of people to the streets. Para ulit nyo, para yung hindi ay sumunod. Yan din ang mga sila. That's exactly what happened. <coughs> Sobrang motivated that the death of Stephen, na he decides, I will go to Damascus and I will prosecute more Christians. Kasi hindi siya na prosecute kay Stephen. So, he wants to make a name for himself. So he decides, pupunta siya sa Damascus at papatay siya ng Christian. Na motivated by the Lord. And so he goes to Damascus. And in Damascus, in chapter 9, verse 1 to 15, he encounters, he encounters Jesus. According to Paul and witnesses, you know, on the way to Damascus, he met Jesus, and God tells, Jesus tells Apostle Paul, why do you prosecute my people? You know what's the ginagawa ng mga tao? God says to him. And on that day, for the next three years, Apostle Paul converts his life and gives his life to God and says, from now on, I should be a follower of Christ. So for three years, no wala si Apostle Paul sa sa sitwasyon, out of the scenery, and a new door opens for Paul. And now in chapter 9, verse 22 and 30, Apostle Paul has now been from Saul to Paul. It is now no longer the Pharisee, the prosecutor. Ngayon, siya na si Paul. Ganda na po ito ng buong life. No? Can you imagine? Kung minsan gusto ko palitan yung testimony ko eh. Para mas maging effective ko sa pastor. Kunyari, sa bingo. Kahapon, pinatay ko yung mga magulang ko. Ngayon, itong mga mga kay Jesus. Siguro mas makikinig ba sa inyo? Siguro pagka pinapogin lang ko na konti. I used to be a serial killer. Now I am an evangelist. Pwede ba yun? Kung minisan, niniisip natin, no? Wow! Gagamitin ni God yan! So, Apostle Paul, no? So, Apostle Paul presents himself to the church. Let me go with me to a... Of chapter 9, verse 22, a, 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 Apostle Paul appears to the church, and Apostle Paul appears to the church. Guess what? Imagine with me now. Morning service, Barnabas introduces, we'd like to welcome this morning a, a new preacher, a new member of the pastoral staff, and he will be, you know, preaching this morning. No? Let's give a hand to our brother. Adolf Hitler. Leo Echegaray. Joseph Stalin. O kung sino mo yung mga mass murderer na kailan natin. Ano ba gawin nyo? So, may Joseph, may I go out? May I go out? Because that's exactly what the church did. The Bible says, and they flee, they flee. Chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. 
Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, Now that I've already attained this and already per and perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Verse 13. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining to what is before. You know what they were forgetting? It wasn't just forget my bad experiences. What he was saying was, everything I have ever had, I forget. In fact, in another verse, must radically position it all. Paul says, and I count it all but dumb. For a lack of, uh, uh, to be, at uh, the risk of being very crude. Sa Tagalog sabi niya, at itong lahat ng aking nagawa, ay tinuturin kong isang tumpok ng taya. So some of you are more than you are. You say, do me. But in the end, that's not, Paul wasn't saying, do me. No, no, no. He was using the three-letter word. Sabi lahat ng meron ng ko. Every talent, everything, everything that I can offer to God is considered dumb when compared to what God can do to me. Understand this carefully, okay? Everything that we have is nothing. Paul understood on the master's road that everything he had to offer to God was nothing. Nothing. And he said, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press. I press. Toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God. The most important thing in my life is to press for the calling of God in my life. Here's a question to you this morning. Do you know what God has called you to? Listen. Do you know what God has called you to? Listen. Do you know what God has called you to? Not your talent, not your ability, but what God has called you to. Have you identified that? Na identify mo na ba yun? Kung sumusunod ka sa calling ng Diyos, not what you can give to God, not what you can offer to God, but your calling of God. Because that's the only thing worth straining for. Ang mahalaga lang sa buhay na inaabot at inahabol ay kung ano yung itinawag ng Diyos para sa iyo. I don't care what you have. Kaya lang yun. Sorry, I hate to burst your pride. I don't care what talents you have. Don't care what abilities you have. It's worth nothing. Apostle Paul is saying, I press toward the mark of what God has called me to. Problema sa maraming Christiano, masyado sensitive. Masyado maangal. Masyado belto. Masyado ganyan. Yung mga may calling dito, yung mga nagkay sa akin. Mga pastor at saka mga Bible schools. Mga pili ka lang kayo kayo mga pili sa kanawa yung Panginoon. If God calls you to serve Him with your life, then may you serve God with your life. That's a privilege you have. Stop complaining. If God gave you an ability to minister for God in this church or outside this church, that is for straining hard for God. Because God called you not to be a businessman. God called you not to be anything, not to be a teacher, not to be a lawyer. God called you to be a Christian. First, to serve God's purpose. First, God even called you to be a father or a mother. God called you to be a father so that your children could follow. As you follow hard after God, they can follow after you. That's, I hate to burst your bubble. Your number one calling is not to put food on the table. Not to give your children a good education. Because if you follow God, He'll give that to you. But I've seen too many parents 
who put their kids in the best schools, who give their kids the best that this world can offer, and they're in my office every day. But they're asking me for counseling. Pastor, what do I do with my kids? It's simple. You are not going to start the mundo, what's he going to say? Or let it pay back here. They have their genes, right? Right. Apostle Paul ran into that. And so, if you look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, uh, to 14 notice I outline and put in the Greek words so you understand. These are all important words. Sabina, forgetting the past, looking, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on to the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God is called through Jesus Christ is calling us. The word reach forward is in epithetomai in, in, in the Greek. No, epithetomai to reach forward. Dioko, to press, to ensue, to follow hard. Epithetomai means in the Greek means to forget. Did you notice a certain? I know, they're all verbs. They don't just happen. They're verbs. These are things we're supposed to do every day. Every day. When you wake up, you reach forward to what God has called you to. Every day, as you wake up, you press hard to follow God. Every day, you forget, instantaneously forget to lose out of mind all that is before. The problem in the church today, this church and any church that I have been ever been to, big or small, the problem of the Marcus Day is we're obsessed with what we have in the past. And we don't move forward with what God wants for us in the future. The difference between the Apostle Paul and you and I. What do you mean, Pastor? When we say that in God, take care of your broken past to flip the script of your life, baguhin yung script ng buhay mo, it does mean to get direction from God and get moving. Kumuha mo ng direction sa Marion and get moving. A lot of us think that this is how I ought to live the Christian life. Apostle Paul goes into the church, boom! Sabi niya, oi, eto ang preaching ko. Sabi niya, boom! Everybody leaves. Matakot eh. Nakuha na nabot. You're gonna kill us. That's the, that's the prosecutor. Yari tayo. Mabuti sana ko si Apostle Paul. Kamuha ng Philippine prosecutors, kagiri. Fake yung buho. You know? Minsan, nasa harapan, minsan, nasa likod, minsan, kung takot din. Buti sana ko, ganun yung prosecutor natin. Hindi na hakatakot eh. You know? Pag nga magaling na, ano yan? Sinod mo yung bulot namin. And Apostle Paul, by this time, actually, looks pretty hideous. Apostle Paul was a little man, the major conversion of content, no offense to those who are losing their hair, do not be depressed. Sa mga nakakal mo, huwag kayo ma-depressed dahil nakakal mo kayo. You are not losing hair, you are gaining head. <laughs> Pastor Bob is watching on the internet. Pastor Bob, you are not losing hair, you are gaining head. Apostle Paul went through the whippings three times. He looked rough. The Bible says that when Apostle Paul said his appearance is questionable, it's historian say, but his words are weighty. What we get? Have you ever heard someone who's like that? When you look at him the first time, you're like, oh, who is this guy? That was when he begins to speak, you're like, whoa, it's kind of really good, right? Ever heard someone like that? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? So here we are, Apostle Paul goes, going, suddenly we go, boom, shut down, door. You're not going in. I am a big tao, suspicious. And he gets God's direction, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. This is what it says. Early part of this letter. But at some points I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace of God given to me. Look at 
it says, because of the grace of God, we do no longer because of the God, because I'm a Roman citizen, because I'm a Pharisee. No. He let God, he got the lecture from God, given to me, verse 16. But to be a minister of Christ to the young. That's what I'm talking about. To be a minister of Christ to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God. So that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. He understood that he didn't have to be a dictator how he was serving the Lord. It wasn't up to him to dictate how he was serve God. He said, God, here's my script, here's my story. And he understood that day. Name what you put your boy now. God will not get that no matter how big or good or excellent or sad his life would be. God writes the story. He's not going to decide how it will happen. You see, if you keep following God's directions for your life, let Him define the doors that you will open. He thought God could use him with the Jews. He found out his script didn't work with the Jews. See, when you're following God, you walk into the doors of opportunity given to you by God. He leads. You just follow. Anyway, God opens the door. You lead, he leads, you follow. Did you get that? When you're following God, he defines, shall he define, ko papasukan mo ba yan o hindi? No? He defines that. He opens the door. You walk in. Pastor, I don't know anything. You walk in. Let him define the door. Ang daming opportunities of worship. Ang daming opportunities of pangalimut sa Panginoon. Ano ang dahilan natin? Ang dahilan ko rin ko, ang dahilan ko gusto ko rin. Hey, makapagtaan mo ng pangalan dito. Ano pa kaya pa ng pangalan mo kung sa ilan? Kung walang paspas ng Diyos yan, ano meron yan? Meron yan. Pera? Mga bata ngayon, puro pera. Para maging comfortable ako, basta. O, tapos yung pinag-uusap ko, maraming pera. Hindi makatulog. Bakit? Natatak ko ako siyong pera. Ano ba? Then again, si Pastor Bob, ano ba? Three million in debt, wife in pain. After a while, nakatulong siya dalawa. Sino mas mayaman? Sino mas mayaman? Okay, go with time. Some of you here, God's opening doors for you to serve Him. You don't serve. Kasi you dictate. Wala kang time. Wala kang pera. Wala kang pilito. Wala kang pilito. Ikaw lang sasabi kung kailangan ka magdilikod sa Panginoon. Ito yung tura ko. Kung kasi lang pagkabiso. Sabat? Sabat? In fact, di ba sa inyo mag-offering ng Panginoon? May bilang pwede. Yung katabi mo na dilikod sa Panginoon, nilagay lahat na nasa offering. Nasa wala. Alam mo bakit? Wala na naman. Ilagay niya na, Lord, pati buhay ko ito na. Boom! Ako sa usapan. Alam niyo bakit? Kasi pagka binigay niyo yung buhay mo sa Panginoon, sila lang bibilang. Now I'm not saying one of our staff. Pastor Bob and Kay have 3 million pesos worth of worries for them. But they serve God this morning. They're following Jesus this morning. And I will beg you, and I'm not a gambler, and I will beg you, if you visit the hospital today, you will greet them, they will greet you, they will smile at you, and they count the goodness of the Lord, salvation every day. Iba sa inyo ito, walang sakit, walang kahit ano, walang dinagdamdam, daming kotse, daming pera, daming abilidad, sila mo mukha ko. Sino mas mayroon? Eh kasi pastor, ano ba yan? You have to tell some stories of members natin who just follow Jesus? You don't know half the story. You don't know half the story. Let God, let's, let's get, let's get deeper into following God. Let's just not go on Sundays. 
Let's get deeper in the serving God. Let's stop the talk. Puro dandan lang tayo eh. No? Pag may naman tao, worship, oh yes, worship, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Worship, woo! Then you go home, you have been, no? I'm going to worship. Ano siya ba yung panahon sa'yo? Wala, wala ka din ng worship. Ano ba? Ano ba lang na si Jesus? Kaya empty yung buhay ng maraming kristyano eh. Kasi you're only filled on the Sunday. Following God, following God is much, much more than words. Much, much more than just actions. Following God is much deeper. Otherwise, it becomes a burden. Let God define and write the script of your life. Okay? Let's have the last one. Let's see this one. Trusting in the Son of God who loved me and 
located in the cell phone in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. In the traditional translations, it says, I am crucified with Christ. No longer I who live. Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live in faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, what did you be Sabrina Christianity? Can we be Sabrina walking through open doors? Not stop you do on Sundays, not stop you do on your own. When we talk about Christianity and walking through God's open doors, we're talking about letting God write the script of your life. Hindi ikaw yung masusunod. Hindi ikaw yung masasabi. Ano ko magdidipin sa Panginoon? Kundi Panginoon na magdidikta, ano ang gagamitin ko? Kaya ko magdidipin? What I will do? What I will do? doing? Pinakpasaan ka lang. I said this in the church in Kabalato on last Sunday. I said, congratulations. This is your Thanksgiving anniversary. I praise God what God is doing in your life. But please understand, it's not about you. I see, I love this church, obviously. But I see, it's not about us. When we are long dead and gone, and God's will is for this church to be here, you will still be here. Let God flip the script of your life. Did you ever stop and think that God may not be interested in your colorful past? Baka naman! Basic man. Na hindi naman talaga interesado ang Panginoon sa mga na-accomplish natin, sa mga pinagdaanan natin, sa mga kahirapan natin, sa mga kalungkutan natin, sa mga talento natin. Naisip nila, baka naman walang pakailang ang Diyos na kalaan. Kasi karamihan nang ginawa lang sa kalaan. Dahil lang sa relatin nila ko, walang tama ba yun? Kung dati kang adik, kasi adik ka. Hindi ka nalawa ng Diyos ng adik. Tama ba yun? Kung wala lang ang bito ka mo noon, di ba siya lang ang bito ka mo? Hindi na kalawa ng Panginoon, huwag lang ang bito ka mo. Tama ba yun? Kung wala lang ang pera, kung may hindi tapos ang ka, okay, blessing the Lord, but it's your first time, di ba kanina makailangan ng Panginoon noon? But what do you mean, Pastor? What I mean is this. That maybe, just maybe, just think about it, okay? Maybe, just maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Pag sumunod tayo sa Panginoon, that we will not necessarily be interested in our past. But understand that if you want God to make sense sa mga nakalaan mo, tapos gamitin niya yung mga experiences mo at saka abilidad mo. If you want God to make sense of your past, to use your abilities, you must give them all to God first today. Understand? If you want God to use what you have na nagawa mo in the past, kahit yung mga parent experiences mo, gusto mo gamitin ang parang doon, you must be willing to give them all to God today. Otherwise, if it stays in your hand, it's just in your hands. Apostle Paul understood that his life script, that all of this, it's not a problem. If you don't give it to the Lord, we don't get to dictate that. Did you ever stop to think that God would not be interested in your story, but He wants to rewrite your story? Come on. There was, you know, thing that God would not be interested in your ability. But he wants to refocus your ability. Jeremy, you stop to think that maybe you will not be able to find out what God is saying to you. But if you give it to him, you can find out what God is saying to you. No matter what talent you have, what ability you have, what resources you have, are pointless unless God defines how he wants to use them. Are pointless unless God defines how he wants to use them. Because if he doesn't say, how do you use them? He doesn't say, how do you use them? Intentions don't matter with God. It's the heart. Let God turn the stuff upside down. Give Him the script of your life. When God opens the door for you, He leads you to follow. It's no longer about you. Apostle Paul, the new resume of the boy. 
At the back of the road, sabi ni Apostle Paul, God, eto yung buhay ko, gamitin mo. And God says, I have no use for that. Hindi ko kailangan yan. God says, hindi ko kailangan ng abogado. Hindi ko kailangan ng businessman. Hindi ko kailangan ng magulay na nakaraan. Hindi ko kailangan ng pambak ng kamalasan na pinagdaanan mo. Hindi ko kailangan ng action. Pero, pwede mong gamitin niya. Bigay mo muna sa akin. Apostle Paul understood at the master's road that before God can use his past in order to change the future of so many people, he must obey God in the present. He must obey God in the present. Our challenge this morning, lumalik naman tayo. Ha? Lumalik naman tayo. Let's, let's go beyond just, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm going to church on Sundays. There's so much more. There's so much more. Pastor, yung bad experience sa buhay ko, ano yan? Di mo malalaman. Until you give it to God. Kung gano'n man natin maraming kasyano, kung saan tayo mayabang. We say to God, God, you know, magaling ako magta. We are waiting for God. And God says, hindi ko kaya na magaling kong magta. Ako sumulat ng boses ng ibon. Tama? Hindi ko kailangan ng powerful voice. No? Pag niloob ko, yung mga vulkan, siya yung sigaw. Pagkadaki na ako. Ina, pinapasaan niya. When God opens a door for you to serve Him, He opens that door. And He say, Ina, I don't really need you, pero mapasalim niya. I remember when uh, uh, way, way back, when we had only one child, we were living in the States, and I decided that was your mountain bike craze, right? So I decided I would build my own mountain bike. That was the stupidest decision I ever made in my life. When did I move into Kawale? But no, Pastor James. Gusto niya nang mag-build ng salin ng mountain bike. Spent ako ngayon. I go to the store and I buy this mountain bike. And I buy all the parts separately. Can you imagine? I have no knowledge of assembling bikes. This is the first time I've ridden them all my life. But I've never assembled ones. I bought all the parts. You know, isang malaking kahon. Yung batalya ng kalaw. Tapos lahat, pati pidal, pati break, pati cable. All this stuff is just nuts. Crazy. Right? I didn't know that I had no parts combined. Kala ko kakawal lang, tsaka pindan, tsaka gulong lang yun eh. Ang dami pala, you know? And so, so it's like, okay, okay, okay. So I'm overwhelmed, so I take this thing to the garage, this thing to the garage. I was assembling and assembling and assembling. And man, it was hard. Three days later, you know, nabuksan mo yung kahon. That's it. I was just overwhelmed by the amount of parts I was buying. Grab it, so I look at it like, you know what the is so that's why. So I started to work on it, and work on it, and work on it, right? Come for me, you know, I just read the instructions, I read the instructions, and you know what? If you're ignorant, kind of instructions, you're still ignorant. Huh? So I'm going to think that I'm going to make kind of instructions, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what Right? So now I have instructions, so I undo all my progress. <coughs> so I can start over, step one. So I did. Working, working, working on it, working, working, working on it. But halfway through the work, my daughter who was about two years old at that time, she walks out to the garage. She walks out and says, Dad, I want, I want to help you. I talked to my wife. Eh, ako nga, nalang pandangan, hindi ko mabuo tong video ng bike na to. 
Tutulong ko itong anak ko. Andrea was just two years old. There was no way. But you know what? I'm her father. I love the, what did I say? Sige na. So she helps me. With nothing, but she helps me. Nalang mo humihirap ng trabaho. The job became more complicated kasi ngayon yung madeta na nandun, yung screw na nandun, yung kapit na nandun. It's all over the garage. But she's supposed to be helping me. Right? A two-year-old helping, you know. Oh, so helping me, helping me. Finally, nabuhuli yung bike. No, nabuhuli yung bike without her help. It became a larger disaster when she helped. I could have done it all myself. So I finally, the gets good at it. You know, just clicked it. Went, okay, so I began, and I was able to fix the bike. And the day we fixed the bike, I was going to take the bike, the bike out for a ride. So I, I tell my dad, Dad, the boo won your bike. And my dad says, Wow. Talaga, ano po mo, ha? Right. And sabi pala po from nowhere, come from behind me and says, Papa, we did it. In my mind, I think we did it. Stormbo ka the whole time. But we did it. I mean, you know, the best she could help me was the lady who was going to drive inside the place. That's it. And she couldn't tell the difference between the two. So lahat ng tools, she brought hammer. Lahat ng tools, hindi niya, none of them, only, I just needed two. Right? Pero kung baka pagsali tayo yung bata, Papa, we did it! I look at her, I'm like, we did it now. Ako lang gumawa yun, hindi mo nila. Right? But because I was her father, I opened the door. I didn't need her. Pampagulo siya. Wala akong makilala. She had no skills. Could not even read. Hindi niya alam ang difference na screwdriver to apply it. Wala pang long post ko. Sa totoo lang, mas tumagal yung trabaho because she was in it. You know? But I'm her father. And I open the door, and she walks in. Today and tomorrow, God will open the door for you, the minister. Dahil kasali ka doon, wala na talaga ng yabang. Dahil kasali ka doon, it might take a little bit longer. Dahil kasali ka doon, easy bit mo, hindi kaya ni God gawin yan, without you. Dahil kasali ka doon, akala ko we are doing God a favor. And through, you could just speak it into existence and go on ahead. But your father who loves you is opening the door for you. Because he wants you to experience. And he wants you to be able to say, Lord, we did it. We did it. We did it. So let God flip the script of your life. Let God take control of that. Say to God, God, ang pangit po na nakaraan ko. God, I have a terrible story in my life. Ugly, ugly, ugly. But God, I want to give it to you. God, nagtapos ako ng pag-aaral. I accomplished this. I've done that. I'm talented. But God, ito ko lang. Pag din nila ko what I have, it will complicate things in your ministry. But God, I'm walking in. Allow me to. I'm going to open the door, and you're going to open that door, and I'm walking in, and at the end, we will say, we did We did Let God flip the script of your life. Let God change that story. Let God take your failures and give it to Him. After your failure, no, it was success. No, it will still be a failure. But God will get the glory. Let God take your victory. And give it to God. And He will not make it a victory. He will make it a success. You understand? There's a difference. In war, they always say, regardless of who has the victory, there are no winners. Am I right? What's happening in Mindanao? The government eh, will have the victory, but there's no winners. Am I? Our countrymen still die? Our people still die? Billions of vessels still lost? 
There's no winners. You take your victories. And let God turn it into a success. Let God open the door and say, I know, if I let you in, it's going to complicate matters. But you're my child. Papa Salim, you can. Come in. Come in, do something. Do something. In fact, Father, we, we come to you this morning.
ಮಾಡಬೇಕು 